Good morning, everybody. It's Robin with Creativity RV, and today I want to introduce you to a very special nomad named Patricia, who's in a self-built schoolie. And I wanted to just point out so nobody's confused, in the beginning of the video, she tells you about her new YouTube channel, but she has changed the name to Tipsy Gypsy. I'm going to put the link for that below. So it's no longer living in the moment. It's Tipsy Gypsy because she's a little tipsy because she had her leg amputated. It's an amazing story. Through it all, she still finished her schoolie. She's an inspiration and I'm really looking forward to you guys seeing her video. Also, there's going to be a more in-depth interview with Patricia on my blog at creativityrv.com. That will be out this Sunday. So I'll put the link for my blog itself below. If you have not subscribed to my blog as well as my channel, please do so because I have lots of interviews with nomads on that channel that just don't want to be on camera. So there's a lot of great information and a lot of great stories on the channel. So here we go. Let's meet Patricia. It's Robin, and this is Patricia. We're at the 2019 RTR, and I have been waiting to meet this woman for months because I heard about her and her nomadic journey and her beautiful schoolie, and I really wanted you guys to meet her. So first of all, I want to tell you guys about Patricia's channel. It's new, right? Yes. What's the name of your channel? Living for the moment. Okay. Because you never know when it's your time. That is so true. So you guys, at the description for this video and also pinned at the top of comments, which is at the bottom if you scroll down, I'm going to put a link to Patricia's channel, and I really encourage you to check it out because she's seriously amazing. So tell us about why you became a nomad. Well, I've always loved to travel with my parents, and ever since I got in an accident in high school and found out that I was almost paralyzed, I knew that I had to get out there and just get to see everything. And life went on and had my children, and finally... I got to get out, of, out on the journey. I looked at different things and I decided to build out my schoolie. It's so great. I love it. That's I love true. it. So what's the what's your channel about? Mainly because I'm disabled and I'm on a limited income, but to show those women, gentlemen, anybody to get out there being disabled, you can still do this. The reason why I have this now is because I did have MRSA in my leg from a previous surgery. And every time I got a sore, it took forever to heal. And this last time, it was just too bad. And I was up in Colorado in July, and it flared it back up. And I laid around for about two and a half weeks and decided, it's like, okay. I drove 12 hours straight home, went to the hospital immediately, told my doctor, let's whack it off. Did it on Wednesday and out on a Thursday. Got this six weeks later, and I'm good to go. So you were in the middle of building out this rig. Yes. When, when you, you had that problem. Yes. I heard from people at Travelers Camp Fest that were with her that she was getting it done and people were passing you things through the window when you were still trying to build out the RV or the schoolie. Mm -hmm. You were still trying to build out the schoolie and that's what was important to you. Mm -hmm. I bet that that was a, a little heartbreaking that you couldn't get that done there. Well, I got my solar done there. That was one of the main things. I wanted the other stuff, but with my leg, I just couldn't do it. I yeah. mainly wanted my solar done because yeah. that was the heaviest part of it. Now, you mentioned something about after you had the amputation, they wanted you to walk with a walker. Yeah. And, like, take it kind of slow, but she wouldn't no. do it, you guys. No, I walked out without it. <laughs> well, that's, that's unusual. Mm -hmm. Or how long does it take most people before most they Most people, can... you have to do therapy for about, you know, five weeks. What do, you with it. what do you attribute that speed to, your success to? Mind. 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 You've got to mind over matter. You've got, you've got to be strong enough to break through all that worry and woe. I am not a negative person. I don't stress. And I just want to live, you know, life to the fullest. That yes. day is every day you take it for granted that, you know, it could be next tomorrow. I think a lot of people need to hear that no matter what their their issue is. Mm -hmm. um, I hear that all the time from people. They just can't get over the fear. Right. Were you always like that? Yes. Yeah. I've always been like that. What, when, when things start to worry you, what's the next thing in your thought process? I don't really have a worry. I just go f fix it. Yeah, you just keep it moving. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't wallow. No. 
So you don't let your you don't let your concerns turn into fears that you fester inside of. No. You think about what has to be done next. Yes. That that is a great way to do yeah. it. Yeah. Um, well, what made you choose a school? You tell us about the length and how you got it and all that stuff. It's beautiful. Uh, the length is about. Um, well, with my rack and everything, it's probably about 20 foot, but mm -hmm. inside my living area is about 6 by 10. Okay. Okay. It's gorgeous, you guys. We're going to see it in a minute. And the thing is, is that I knew this wasn't going to leak, and I wanted something of my own. I looked at the tiny homes, but they were mm -hmm. just too big to pull and everything mm -hmm. in my budget. Right. And... Um, I just fell in love when the schoolies started coming out, and I got this for a really great price, and it's my vehicle too. So right. I sold my, you know, got rid of my vehicle and put that money into this. Wonderful, Patricia. Are you handy? Did you know how to build out a schoolie? Yes, my father taught me a lot of things. Okay. And this is not a diesel; it is a GMC gas, mm -hmm. and I did that for a reason because I can work on gas vehicles. Oh, great. I can't work on diesel. <laughs> if there was somebody else that was thinking about doing a build-out that doesn't have your experience, where would you tell them to start? Find friends that know. Yeah. So to keep the cost down. Yeah. I went, you know, like I got boards free. I got um, what I built with. But the, the main things I had to pay for was the insulation and the floor. And pretty much everything else um, was free. Where did you buy it? Where do you find a used schoolie? I found it um, in the marketplace, actually, off of Facebook. No way. I got it for $1,900. You know what? I did not even know the Facebook marketplace really worked until about three months ago, and now I hear about it all the time. People use it for everything. $1,300? $1,900. $1,900. So then when you got it, were there chairs in the back seat? No, he had them all so out. That was the one thing uh, I was so thankful that's for. That's nice. When I thought about doing this, I wouldn't want to take the chairs out. Yeah. Heard that can be uh, difficult. So it was just a metal shell inside. Kind of. I, I had to take up the flooring because still had the rubber flooring and the rotted wood that was there. Mm. So I took all that out, and then I patched the holes where the floors, you know, had been bolted down. And then I put um, a layer of weatherproofing paper. Mm -hmm. And then I put two inches of insulation down. Mm -hmm. And then I put Reflectix on top of that, and then my floor. Nice. And I went halfway up on the wall the same way. Nice. Um, what year is the engine? This is a 2001. Nice. You like it? Yes. What kind of gas mileage do you get? I get 10 to 12. Yeah, not bad. No. And, I mean, how do you feel driving this down the road? Do you, easy? It's, it's like a big old van. A big old van. Yeah. Yeah. What else do you want us to know about the outside of the schoolie or the purchase of the schoolie or the build-out before we go in and take a tour? Well, it was kind of funny just recently coming down here. I did have the, the school doors, and I got hit, a hit and run. So actually my door is from the Ehrenberg cleanup that we had just recently also. Uh, some guys helped me get my door off, and they found that it's an old Pace Arrow door and got it welded on and everything, and Gosh. so I'm still working on the window part, but uh, got new stairs from a, another Nomad. I mean, the Nomads are the so best. Great. Yes. Aren't they great? Yes. If you guys want to see more of Patricia's build out, just put a lot of stuff on her channel, and I'll also link that video. Patricia, can we see the inside? Of course. Let's do it. Okay, okay go on. All right, we're going in. Okay. You have one of those great curtains. Yes. <laughs> I love it. How many pets do you have in here? I have two, just my dog and my cat. My kitty, that's Buzz. He's pretty. He likes to look out the window. Yeah, so does my boy. Yeah. And then tell us about uh, this guy. This is Titan. He's actually a service dog also. He helps me out. Um, I think that's a lot of reason why I, I used to be on anxiety medicine. Mm -hmm. Because I did hold stuff, you know, and sure. get going. And I got him and... I'm not on it anymore. That's great. Did you bring some stuff from home like yeah, this? Yeah, I'm going to take every state that I have and take pictures oh my and gosh. put them in here eventually. I love it. What and a it, great it idea. it turns on at night. It's real nice. Oh, gosh. You are an artist. This is my shower. I do have a camp flux here, and I ran my piping to my water tank back here. Okay. I have a barrel that I was going to stand in, but I can't no more because of my leg. So what I do is I take this part out 
uh, there and just and then sit on there mm -hmm. and let the water run. And you have a curtain up here. Yeah, um, I actually have some new curtain things because it does have a tendency to fall. Mm -hmm. And it's easier for me now to actually wash my hair and then sit and do my body. Right. So right. Uh, you're a hairdresser, so I notice you have the good shampoo over there. Yes, <laughs> I do color my hair on the road. <laughs> I gave up. I, I I can't do it yet. I, I just can't I just, do it yet. Yeah. Being a hairdresser. Yeah. But I brought this from home. This is my dresser. And did you just bolt that down? Yes. Nice. Yeah. This cabinet I redid. I do have to redo it. Some of the roads out here really knocked it down, so I do have to rebuild that. Okay. So you actually have an oven. Yes, I have an wow. oven. Wow. I got these out of a friend of mine's RV. Um, like I said, I still have things to do. We got to put another siding on here and mm -hmm. everything. Um, but I got each of these for fifty dollars. Wow! So you have a fridge and an oven, and they work off of this propane bottle. Yes. Okay. And you were just saying that you had trouble getting it to fire once you got here, but now we just heard it. Yeah. Now my fridge is firing, so now I can. I've been just putting ice in my freezer mm -hmm. and keeping my meat. Yeah. And uh, friends' beverages once in a yeah, while. Friends you know? beverages. <laughs> um, yeah, friends' beverages. Yeah, I know a lot so. of van lifers just use a cooler mm -hmm. with ice. But that's been keeping it yeah. nice and cool. Yeah, and you've got some great storage up here. Mm -hmm. I just did that uh, because I can't. That was the only thing I could not build by myself, the cabinetry. And mm -hmm. I really didn't want that bulkiness. I want to be able to see. Right. So I right. did that by just with a curtain rod hung yeah. on that and it does it a lot nicer. You know, in some of the other interviews I've done, when people do a build up, they say one of the biggest mistakes they make is they line the upper cabinets with cabinets mm -hmm. because they think it's going to give them more room and then they feel claustrophobic. Yeah. So that was, uh, I think, a smart move. Yeah, yeah I mentioned that because you guys look how open it is in mm -hmm. here. It's so great. I just use baskets and then when yeah. I need to on certain things, like I take this and like littler things and food, I put them in baskets and when I go, I sit on the floor, then all I have to do is pick it back up. Right. Yeah. Everything has its place probably. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right? Yep. Um, how much water do you have back there? In your 50 gallon. And it's under the bed? Yes. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. 50? I'm 50 jealous. Gallon. I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm so jealous. And my favorite part is this ceiling. I did bed. this because I have, uh, you know, your exit door. Oh, right. That's where a lot of heat comes in. Mm -hmm. So I put a cushion and then Reflectix and then to cover that up, mm -hmm. I, I love my tapestries. And mm -hmm. I have a tapestry here, mm -hmm. which I'm getting ready to make with uh, scarves and stuff, an awning out front. Oh, that would be great. So, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then tell us about the bed. The bed... <laughs> I, I got saved on this, which it saved me. I got all the wood free, but it was a door for some a gal's garage door that got broke into. Oh, wow. And so it was already made together. So my son, he did help me bring it in. But what I did is, is to get it built up, I would just be on my... I lift it with my back and drill in each corner. You drill it into the metal? No, there, there's blocks. Oh, you've of got wood. yeah, 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 yeah. Support blocks. Uh -huh. For those of us that don't know how to do a build right. out, that's yeah. If you get it snug enough, it ain't. It's not gonna go nowhere. Yeah, yeah I built some shelves and learned that. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, that's great. And then you just put a foam topper on it. Actually, uh, yeah, it's a mattress, but I'm gonna get a different. I want to get a different foam one. It, this one wasn't very good. I'm gonna get a different one. Yeah. And it's, my dog and my cat sleep up there. And, and you've I got have some a storage. More storage up yeah. there. Patricia, it's so cozy in here. And I do lights. At night, let me see if it'll show up very much today or not. Oh my gosh. And it can, you know, it blinks and stuff too. <laughs> it's a disco party in here. Yeah. Let yeah. me know when you're going to start dancing. I'll no kidding. Come over. <laughs> How long have you been on the road? June 17th. I left the day after my grandbaby's birthday. That's nice. And even with the MRSA and the leg, you didn't want to stop. No. I got home and did that real quick and <laughs> uh, <laughs> pretty much uh, after it healed good enough, but I had to do a, a shower for my daughter's wedding and then mm -hmm. I was out on the road. You weren't going to let anything stop no, you? No. I left December 2nd. Right. How long do you see yourself doing this? Till I die. Right. And you're young. You look young to well, me. Thank you. Um, so you got a lot of years ahead of you I'm of adventure. That's yeah. great. If there's somebody out there that's thinking about doing this life and they have some anxiety about it or they're on the fence or they're just not sure what direction to go, what advice would you give them? Just 
get out there and do it. If you need help, I will be more than happy to come and help you. Oh, wow. I would. I'm on the road. I can do it. Yeah. I can give you pointers. Um, I, I would love to help build out. Some, yeah. You yeah. Know, somebody build it out. Yeah. Um, if somebody is just scared to leave their regular life because they think being on the road is scary. I get that question a lot. Mm -hmm. Did you find that that was true? No. No. People are nice. Yes. You feel pretty safe? Very safe. Anybody can get on the road. Again, you guys, I encourage you to check out Patricia's channel. Tell us the name. Living for the moment. Remember, the link's going to be below. This is an amazing woman, and actually, she has really spoken to me today. Um, this was a gift for me thank to you. do this interview, and I appreciate you, and thank you so much for giving us the tour and giving us an interview. By the way, you guys, um, there's going to be a written interview with uh, Patricia where we're going to go a little bit more in depth on my blog. I'll put a link for that also below. You guys, if you want to get out there, there's a way. Very there's a so. way. So I just want to say thanks again. Thank you. Everybody have happy travels out there and be free.